Part 2 of the Catalog of Testimonies by Jacob Andrea and Martin Chemnitz Translated by F. Bente and W. H. T. Dow This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 2. That Christ has received His Majesty in time, moreover, not according to the divinity or the divine nature, but according to His assumed nature, or according to the flesh, as man or as the Son of Man, humanitus, ratione corporis seu humanitatis, propter carnum, quia homo, aut filios hominis, humanly, with respect to his body or humanity, on account of the flesh, because he is man or the son of man. Hebrews 1.3 When he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hebrews 2.8-9 but now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor. Luke 22.69 Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Luke 1.32-33 The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. John five twenty six to twenty seven, he hath given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Athanasius quoted by Theodoret, Dialogue two. Now, whatever Scripture says that the Word received in time, and as to whatever he was glorified, it says on account of his humanity and not on account of his divinity. Athanasius, in the Oration Against the Arians, 2 and 4. Scripture does not mean that the substance of the Word has been exalted, but this refers to His humanity, and He is said to be exalted on account of the flesh. For since it is His body, He Himself is properly said as man to be exalted and to receive something with respect to His body, according to humanity because the body receives those things which the Word always possessed according to His own deity and perfection from the Father. He says, therefore, that as a man He received the power which as God He always has. And He who glorifies others says, Glorify Me, in order to show that He had a flesh that lacked such things. And therefore, when the flesh of His humanity receives this glorification, He so speaks as though He Himself had received it. For we must bear in mind everywhere in the Holy Scriptures that none of those things which he says that he received, namely in time, he received in such a way as though he had not had them. For being God and the Word, naturally, he had those things always. But now he says that he received them according to humanity, so that his flesh in himself receiving them, he might in future hand them over from out of his flesh to us, to be firmly possessed. The same on the assumed humanity against Apollinarius. When Peter says that Jesus was made of God, Lord, and Christ, he speaks not of his divinity, but of his humanity. His word always was Lord, neither did he become Lord first after the cross, but his divinity made the humanity Lord and Christ. Also, Whatever Scripture says that the Son has received, it understands as having been received with respect to His body, and that body is the firstfruits of the Church. Accordingly, God raised up and exalted His own body first, but afterwards the members of His body. By these words Athanasius explained what a little afterwards he applied in its way also to the entire Church. Basil the Great, against Eunomius, Book 4 that the Lord is celebrated and receives a name above every name, also that he says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. I live for the sake of the Father. Glorify thou me with the glory which I had with thee before the world was, and so forth, must be understood of the Incarnation, and not of the Deity. Ambrose, Book 5, De Fide, Chapter 6 you have learned that he can subject all things to himself, undoubtedly according to the operation of deity. Learn now that he receives, according to his flesh, 
all things as subjected to him, as it is written, Ephesians 1. According to the flesh, therefore, all things are delivered to him as subject. The same, Book 5, Chapter 2. For God does not give to the apostles participation in his seat, but to Christ, according to his humanity, is given participation in the divine seat. And chapter 6. In Christ, our common human nature, according to the flesh, has obtained the prerogative of the heavenly seat. Chrysostom. Hebrews. 1. Sermon 3. The Father has commanded, saying with respect to the flesh, and let all the angels of God worship him. Theophylact on John 3. And he gave all things into the hand of the Son according to humanity. Ecumenius from Chrysostom, Hebrews 1. For as the Son of God, he has an eternal throne. Thy throne, says God, is forever and ever. For after the cross and passion, he was deemed worthy of this honor, not as God, but as man he received what he had as God. And a little after, as man he therefore hears, sit on my right hand, for as God he has eternal power. Cyril, Book 9, Thesaurus, Chapter 3 As man he ascended to the power of ruling. The same, Book 2, Chapter 17 As man he sought his glory which he always had as God. Neither are these things said by him as though he had ever been destitute of his own glory but because he wished to bring his own temple into the glory which he always had as God. The same, Book 2, Ad Reginus, that he received glory, power, and rule over all things, must be referred to the conditions, properties of humanity. Theodoret on Psalm 2, Though Christ as God is Lord by nature, he receives universal power also as man. On Psalm 110, Sit thou at my right hand. This was said according to the human nature. For as God he has eternal dominion. So as man he has received what he had as God. As man therefore he hears what is said to him, Sit at my right hand. For as God he has eternal dominion. The same on Hebrews 1. Christ always received from the angels worship and adoration. For he always was God but now they are adoring him also as man. Leo, Epistle 23, treating of Ephesians 1, says, Let the adversaries of the truth declare when, or according to what nature, the Almighty Father raised his Son above all things, or to what substance, nature, he subjected to all things. For to the Deity, as to the Creator, all things have always been subject. If power was added to him, if sublimity was exalted, it was inferior to him who exalted, and did not have the riches of that nature of whose liberality it stood in need. But a person holding such views, Arius receives into his fellowship. The same, Epistle 83. Although in Christ there is absolutely one and the same person of the divinity and the humanity, Nevertheless, we understand that exaltation and the name above every name pertain to that form which was to be enriched by the increase of so great a glorification. For by incarnation nothing had been withdrawn from the word which would be returned to it by the gift of the Father. But the form of a servant is human humility, which has been exalted to the glory of divine power, so that divine things were not to be done without the man, nor human things without God. In the same place, whatever Christ has received in time he has received as man, upon whom are conferred those things which he did not have. For according to the power of the word, the Son also has all things that the Father has, without a difference. Vigilius, Book 5, Against Eutyches The divine nature does not need to be elevated to honors, to be increased by advancements of dignity, to receive the power of heaven and earth by the merit of obedience. Therefore, according to the nature of the flesh, he acquired these things, who, according to the nature of the word, never lacked any of them. For had the Creator no power and dominion over his creature, that in the last times he should obtain them as a gift? 
Nicephorus, Book 1, Chapter 36 Christ is seen by his disciples on the mount in Galilee, and there he affirms that the highest power of heaven and earth has been delivered to him, namely, according to humanity. End of Part 2